Hey everybody, see that large number 16 right there? Well, it's not January 16th, and I don't think it's Raspberry Pi's 16th birthday yet, so it can mean only one thing. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM on a Raspberry Pi for the first time. Previously, we've only ever seen Raspberry Pi 5 at 8 gigabyte and the Pi 500, as you can see here, at 8 gigabyte as well. Now, we've got it hooked up today, to the official Raspberry Pi keyboard, mouse, and brand new 15.6 inch flat panel monitor. We've been having some fun with the flat panel monitor and the Pi 500 recently, but now we're gonna have even more fun with a Pi 5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so for today's exercise, we're gonna put this to the test and see, could this be your daily driver? We've already kind of tested the Raspberry Pi 4 in this regard and the Pi 5 8 gigabyte in this regard and the Pi 500. And we've opened up a bunch of browser windows, gone to Google Sheets and done different things. But we're gonna try with this guy because we think the 16 gigabytes is really what's going to do it for you, being able to take this home and be a desktop PC replacement. All right, so we've got our Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte set up here. We're gonna test multi-monitor support in a little bit, but before we do that, I think we need some applications to really test it. So there's a handful of programs out there in something called Pi Apps, which make it very easy to install those said programs. So if you head over to pi-apps.io slash install, you'll find the wget terminal line that you'll need to put in the terminal to go ahead and install Pi Apps. Now we went ahead and run this and the result is such that you end up getting under your accessories a Pi Apps application. Now once we open that we have an option to choose from a whole list of different categories. Let's go ahead and minimize a bunch of stuff. You can see we've already installed these system uh, gauges uh, you can look at all apps, you can look at things that affect appearance. Uh, me personally, I love doing design and creative stuff, so using GIMP as a Photoshop of sorts and Inkscape as an Illustrator of sorts, uh, those are here easy to install. Now we've already installed Inkscape, let's go ahead and install GIMP as well. Here we go, it pops up here, tells you what it's about, and install. And then Pi Apps kind of takes over the rest of it for you. or should. Let's try that again. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install GIMP. So we click on it here. This window pops up and we click install. And then a terminal window from Pi Apps opens and it installs. All right, so now that we've installed it, we still have this Pi Apps application up. We're just gonna move it over to the side. We're gonna go back under the Raspberry Pi menu and it should be under graphics, and it is. So let's go ahead and open that up and see how quickly it opens on this Pi 5 16 gigabyte. Yeah, okay, great. At this point, we could download a photo and do some photo editing. Uh, we're not gonna do that just yet. Let's wait till we get the other monitor hooked up. So we've installed a bunch of programs. We've installed LibreOffice, uh, Libre, Libra, LibreOffice. Uh, which is basically a Linux open source version of Microsoft Office and has a whole suite of tools that you'd be used to. Uh, we've installed Astro Menace, which is a spaceship shoot 'em up game, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit. Uh, we've installed the two graphics programs, GIMP and Inkscape. Uh, we've installed Conky, this uh, desktop uh, visualizer for your different um, CPU uh, performance and temperature, all that good stuff. Um, and I think we might have installed one or two other things, but in order to see if this really can do what we want it to do, let's go ahead and hook up a second monitor and see how it does. We've got two monitors set up as you can see. I can drag the windows back and forth. Pretty snappy. All right, let's turn up the volume a little bit so you can see that working. I think that they've both got a ton of great features that we're gonna tell you about today that will help make your mind up on how to spend that extra tax refund money. And we're Today, running this in 1080p. Reality Hold on. V3K. And we're running this in 1080p on YouTube. So I think that's great. That's fantastic. So let's keep that running. Let's go ahead and open something else. So I want to do some basic vector work. So I'm going to bring up Inkscape while that's running. I'll bring it over to this side. 
and we'll do just a new document. And all I want to do is create a basic SVG file. All right, so now we've got Inkscape open, and I'm just going to try to make a pretty basic shape here using the pen tool with the Bezier curves. Sounds French. Let's go up here. And that creates my basic shape, which I could now take over to a vinyl cutter or into Tinkercad and extrude up and have a three-dimensional object. Uh, all I would have to do is go to File, Save As, or Export, and make sure it's a .svg. So I'm, I got that. Let's just kind of throw that over the side here, go grab something else. All right, so we have Office now. Let's bring up, let's bring up the calc, see how quick that opens. Did you know that LibreOffice offers a variety of user interface options to make you feel at home? That's awesome. Let's go ahead and run this now. Uh, let's do the standard toolbar or tabbed, kind of like uh, another very popular Office suite. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Apply to Calc. All right, this does feel somewhat familiar. Let's go ahead and double click it. And you are running the version 7.4. No, I don't want to learn what's new. Let's go ahead and click out of that. Oh, I still have something over here I have to do, and let's close. Now let's click out of that. And we've still got the video running. We still have Inkscape in the background. Let's do a couple of numbers. Numbers are great, 14, 15, 16. And if we select them all down at the bottom, does it tell us anything? Yep, there's our average, 14.25, wonderful. All right, let me go, actually, let's go shopping at microcenter.com. Um, maybe you've never been to a microcenter before. Well, have we got a treat for you. Underneath here, you can always go check out a virtual store. This should be relatively graphic intensive because you're gonna be walking uh, into an actual store. So let's see how it handles a Matterport model. Boom, all right, if we go get the dollhouse, we can go back to the 3D printing area Ooh, look at all that filament, beautiful. All right, let's walk around a little bit and see how this works. Great. I think if we keep going down a few more aisles, you might even see some Raspberry Pi product. I'll tell you what, for a single board computer to be uh, just taking a, a nice, easy walk through a micro center, not bad. Uh, this is a little bit dated. We need some new pictures of 3D printers up here, but uh, you can see that this is working. Now, let's go over to close that out and see what kind of deal we've got right now. Winter savings top deal. Look at that. Acer Aspire 15.6 for $399.99. How about that? Let's go to uh, Tinkercad. Yeah, that's a good idea. Isn't it? So Tinkercad looks to be working okay. Let's throw a shape on there and see what happens. Boom. Scroll in. Stretch it out, that's in real time, that's, that's great. There's no laggy, no laggy. Uh, what gets tricky at times is if it can subtract things. So we're gonna create a upside down, what is this called? It's that quadratic formula thing, right? I didn't have math in college. All right, and the fries are done. All right, so we're gonna take this subtracted part and combine them together after we align them. So we've aligned them up and we're gonna group them and there you go. It's processing, 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 and there it is. You now have, if you go to transparent mode, you can see uh, you now have this shape. I mean, this is great. I use Tinkercad a lot, and honestly, if I just had a Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte set up as my Tinkercad machine, it'd be well, well worth it. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize that. We've still got this running. Do we still have LibreOffice? We can go open. Uh, let's see what else we do. Oh, let's go get that game that we downloaded. Now, this feels mm, circa 1998, 2000-ish. Uh, but hey, here it is running on a Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to skip all this uh, backstory because nobody has time for that. And we're going to go ahead right into the mission and we're going to start firing away. 
So we've got two of our companion ships here and we're about to fire Z missiles. Let's go, boom, yeah, he's gone. All right, nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, escape out of that and go over here, turn up the audio just a little bit. We can pause this video and let's see if we have, now we get the pew pews. They're pretty low frequency pew pews because they're such big blasts of plasma, so understandable. Let's fire a missile again and explosion. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so we've done some very light gaming, some basic 3D modeling, and even a little bit of office work as you saw in the LibreOffice spreadsheet application. We've done some web browsing, YouTube video watching, and more, all on this Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte, hooked up to two monitors, and again, using the official Raspberry Pi keyboard, mouse, and monitor. We've had a great time today testing this out, and we can't wait to see what you do with the Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabytes of RAM model. All right, that's it for us now. We'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.